Okay, so now that we've created our measure table, got our first measure, we can now use this measure, and, and I've, you know, I've advised that you should always write measures no matter how simple the calculation. Let's create some, some more measures. <clears throat> Let's create some, write some more uh, DAX formula to create these, these virtual measures. Let's first jump to the data table and see what, what calculations that we can do. So here, if we look at this table, uh, let's just jump to our sales table. So if we look at our sales table, what I'm gonna do whilst I notice it is I'm gonna change the format of that date. Now, we have the quantity and we have the price. Now, in most cases, you would likely try and create another column here, I'm sure you would. And <clears throat> that's because you normally do it in Excel and, and that's how you actually create these calculations. But what we can do is we can actually run a calculation here which gives us the total uh, total sales or total revenue, if you like, for each different row. We can actually do it in a measure. And it, and, and it works because it, of this, uh, of a formula, uh, a part of DAX called iterating, iter iterating functions or for functions within DAX called, called iterators. And what they do is they have what's called a row context. And because of the row context, we can actually do calculations within a row. To, prove, to illustrate this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column here first, which <coughs> is, going to, is going to times quantity by price to give us sales. So I'm going to call it sales. And if I go quantity times price and enter, you'll see here that we now have, we now have the total sales for each different row. Now, in some cases, this quantity isn't actually one, so it could be two, so or three or four, whatever. So you have to make sure that you actually have sales, not just counting up price, obviously. Now, we could create a measure which just sums up the sales column here, which we'll do just to prove a point. And I'll call this, uh, I'll call this aggregation. And I'll go sum of sales. And then we just find the sales column. Now I'm just going to get rid of these now and then get a, let's get our product name. Let's put this into a table. And now sales aggregation is retrieving a value for it, which is great. But what I wanna tell you is that you, sh you, you do not need to do this. You shouldn't do it actually. You can actually create this calculation in as efficient a way or a more efficient way without creating this column. And it's called using an iterator. And an iterator is a sum X, uh, has, has uh, iterators have an X on the end of their, for, their formulas. So it's sum and then an X. And so in this case, I'm gonna go total sales and I'm gonna go sum X. And then it tells me to reference a table and then an expression. And I mentioned earlier row context, right? Well, row context is what is um, what what is classified inside this expression? So we're going to say reference. Go jump to the sales table, and then for every single row, times quantity by price. Now if we go into there, and we'll make sure that the formatting is done correctly, and we drag this in, you'll see that we get exactly the same result, but we've done it in a different way. <clears throat> Now, what row context does is, is and what these uh, iterating functions do is that they allow us to write whatever expression we want in here, very similar to what we would write in a calculated column, but we do it inside a measure. So it's a virtual calculation versus a physical calculation because we're creating a column of, of, of information here. But what that sum x is doing is it is, and if I, if I click on it like so, It's going to the, every single row in the sales data table and going sales quantity times sales price. So if we jump to the sales table, you'll see here that for every single row, it's going quantity times price. But instead of physically calculating and putting it into a column, it's virtually, it's it's putting, it's saving it into memory. So think of it, think of it as something that's just been embedded into the memory of the calculation engine. And then it jumps to the second row and it goes this quantity times this price and it, been, and it remembers that in memory and, and then so on and so forth. It does it for every single row. Whatever expression we put inside that row context, it does for us. 
and then when it gets to the end of this table, it then goes and sums up, <clears throat> because that's what we've asked it to do with a sum x, it goes and sums up all of those all of those calculations which are saved into memory. And that's a really powerful way to run quite complex calculations quite quickly. And also to optimize your data models because physical physical columns that are unrequired take up memory in your model. So you have to remember that. And SumX allows you to do things virtually, which saves a lot of memory in terms of uh, how big your columns can actually get. Okay, so we can actually now get rid of this measure because we don't need it. And I'm also going to get rid of that column. This example was just to pr make it, prove it. Make it, we'll go through an example of why you shouldn't create calculated columns in a lot of cases, because you don't need to. Okay, so we've got our total sales, we've got our total quantity. But now we, now we can also calculate our total cost. But how do we do that? So if we now go, f uh, we have to obviously find a cost column. We've got a price column, but if we look in our product table, you'll ha you see here we actually have a cost column. So we need to somehow and we can do it virtually in a measure, we need to somehow times the quantity times the cost for every single row and then sum that up and that's going to give us the total cost. So we can actually do something quite similar to this. But we have to uh, add one thing in here. So I'm going to go total cost and then I'm going to go sum x and again I'm going to reference the sales table because that's what we're going to iterate through. And then I'm going to go quantity but this time, because that product, that cost, did not actually sit within the sales table, what we have to do is use a function called related. And what related allows us to do is reach back up into that lookup table, because it's, it's got a relationship to that table, and find the cost column. So I'm just going to type in COS, and then I go tab, and then enter. And then, so if you, what, if you think about what's happening here versus what's happening with the initial one, is that... For every single row in the sales table, we're going times the sales quantity by the related product cost. So what it does is it, uh, via the sales table, it recognizes what product it is, for the, say for the first row here, and then it goes and reaches back up the relationship, reaches back up the relationship to the product table, and then finds that particular ID and the cost associated to that product ID. And then it does the same for the next row, the next row, the next row, and then it sums up the total uh, at the end. Everything that is saved into memory, every single row, and then it sums up every single one of those calculations in memory. And so now we've got total costs, and we just want to format this, and then we can drag it into there. <clears throat> 